um, explorer of, of different medium, uh, it's really exciting to see what my contribution could be uh, in this field, and that's uh, uh, that's the field of VR. So, uh, uh, filmmaking has two distinct aspects. Uh, one is uh, uh, the desire to communicate and tell stories, and the other one is uh, working with a certain medium. Uh, this desire to tell stories uh, is at the core of uh, any artistic or creative endeavor, I would say artistic, maybe not creative, uh, in filmmaking, in painting, in drawing, in sculpting, and that remains the same no matter what medium you express yourself in. So I started out uh, as a painter. I graduated uh, Art Academy in Zagreb uh, as a painter in 2004. Uh, at the same year, uh, I um, opened uh, a studio for 2D and 3D animation called uh, Lemonade Productions. But at that moment, we were a game development studio. We uh, uh, created casual games and we explore, we were exploring the medium of, of uh, real-time rendering, of uh, gamification, of computer games. So it was really uh, a, a leap from my uh, formal education, which was painting, you know, like uh, oils uh, and stuff like this. But I enjoyed uh, the idea of uh, bringing that knowledge that you get from an art academy, and that's the knowledge of composition, the knowledge of you know uh, form, and uh, and just uh, uh, your artistic view of the world, and bringing it to something as computer games uh, and 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 computer generated imagery. So uh, that kind of uh, jump from one to medium to another uh, is what in a lot of ways has uh, marked my career as a filmmaker. So the first real question is once we establish that filmmaking is about expressing ideas and telling stories, how can you express your ideas and tell your stories inside VR? That's the most import important question, which is the reason why we decided to, to try VR, because we, we wanted to see how we would approach storytelling in this medium. And for me, it's really difficult to think about creating films in VR without experiences, experiencing VR first. So we, we had the VR headset and we, we dabbled with it and we, we explored it. We weren't even sure if we we're going to make a film in it. We were more interested in, in getting, getting acquainted with this medium which we thought would be a super cool thing to, to have in our arsenal of, of knowledge and artistic tools. We did uh, one commercial project uh, inside VR, which is always a good way to, to start with a medium, because commercial projects always have uh, a, a well-defined boundaries, and, and you can test your knowledge of, of a medium by doing commercial work, because in artistic work you can always kind of smudge, smudge the lines and say, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. But in a commercial project you have to kind of hit the mark and that really, uh, that's why you really need to learn to learn how to control the medium so you can deliver to the client what he wants. So once we did this commercial project and we realized that uh, because of our previous knowledge of uh, computer uh, programming that we are quite able to work inside VR, we decided to go for a VR project. So our journey was not that we had an idea and we said VR is the best medium for this. We approached it the other way around. We, we said VR is exciting for us. It's 
and we got a bit bored with 2D because the previous film was 2D, so we were like, I know, let's do something uh, without animators, because <laughs> animators are the worst, especially, you know, 2D animators, they're horrible. No, hello to the animators and the internet, you're great. We need you for our next film. Uh, yeah, but we, the thing with uh, creating 2D animated films, the, uh, a lot of it is in the hands of the animator. In 3D films, you can change the camera angle, you can change the lighting, you can change the, the silhouette, but with 2D animation, you kind of get what you get. And I was, I was looking forward to going back to a medium where I am able to explore the space more than in 2D animation, which is really like fixed. Once you get that, that animated outline, that's, there's not much you can do. So uh, in any case, we, we, we thought, how should we approach VR? And we talked about it and discussed it and, and we watched a bunch of VRs. We weren't really impressed with their approach uh, uh, and how they approach the medium. We, uh, in the end, we settled that for us, VR is closest to a performance piece. In a sense, to me, it seemed VR could be like you are us or like you are watching a performance artist perform something for, for you. you the audience of one. So these were the two elements that were key in our VR um, uh, process. So we knew we will approach VR as, a, as if we were creating a performance piece. And we knew we had the power to talk to just one person, which is something completely different than uh, classic f classical film where you're speaking to an audience of five, 500, 1,000. Here you have, you have a chance to really strike up a conversation with just one person. So immediately we knew that uh, the theme of, of our VR project should be something that we would like people to engage with and hopefully be a bit transformed by this engagement. So we come from Yugoslavia, uh, now Croatia, which was in a civil war, uh, or is it a yeah, civil war? I don't know, of war, let's call it war, uh, in the 90s, and we experienced firsthand what it means uh, to have people dislocated from their homes, from their lives, and uh, having their identity reduced uh, to a single world, world immigrant. Because back home, those people were doctors, dentists, um, hairstylists, artists, but uh, when they're put in this situation of being an immigrant, all of these things are stripped away from you and you are left with just one identity. And this idea spoke to us and in recent years the problem of migration again became a hot topic and we were in a position now where we are just bystanders. We are watching at uh, this migration crisis happen, but we are watching it through YouTube or, or you know, TV or whatever. So you, you have this feeling of helplessness and, uh, uh, and you, you feel like a spectator. So these were like two key ideas that we brought uh, 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 into this uh, uh, initial concept for our VR film. So we need to talk about migration in a way where we are actually talking about dislocation. And we, are, we were trying to examine this uh, moment, this absurd moment of, of dislocation. So the film follows an immigrant in this one small segment of his journey, just like a, a, a moment in time. And you are able to observe this moment as it, inf 
unfolds in front of you inside uh, VR. So VR has the ability to, to really occupy your senses. You really, uh, uh, you really dare. So for a VR experience, one of the main protagonists is the space itself. So we spend a lot of time and care in the, in the scenery and in creating an atmosphere around the viewer and we treated this with as much care and attention as we did to the main protagonist. So our VR film is about space and it's about an intimate communication between the protagonist and the viewer but the viewer is always left as a spectator. So the only interaction that we have in our, in our VR, because, and before this, let me just briefly touch on this idea of interaction inside VR, because uh, if you had a chance to experience in different festivals or here or I don't know, VRs are kind of separated in two categories. Or I would even say that people think of VR as interactive. If it's not interactive, it's, there's like something missing. So the idea of, of interactive elements inside VR is quite popular, but in my opinion, is, it, it's misplaced. And nine out of 10 times, it's, it's, it doesn't work. Because film is film, and computer games are computer games and when you try to mix the two you stumble into an area which for me is not really uh, a good place to be. So the only interaction which we have in our VR is interaction that we didn't put in as a gimmick but as an integral uh, part of the VR and that's the moment where you have to walk inside the character, the main character. Up to that point you're kind of observing him and he kind of gets close to you, like maybe here. And then in order to continue you have to move inside him. So we thought this was a good idea because of two things. It, for, it, it forces you in even more into an intimate relationship with the character. But also it kind of dislodges you from, from, from your standing position. Because other people, they go inside VR and they're like, like this, they're like, they don't want to move because they're either afraid or accust not accustomed to it. Or, or they're just afraid they're gonna hit somebody passing by. So they're, they're pretty stiff. And because we, we treated the space as, a, as an integral part of, of the idea of VR, we wanted people to explore it a bit. So we used this technique to kinda push you from your uh, inert, uh, place and, and kind of say, yeah, yeah, you can, you can move a bit. So for us, uh, it's all about how to enhance the story and how to immerse you uh, as deep as we can inside this experience. Um, so that was, that was up our approach to VR. We tried not to be fascinated by technology and, and we wanted to, as much as we can, uh, approach it purely as a storytelling uh, medium. But when we talk about storytelling, storytelling in VR is impossible. It's, you don't want to tell stories inside VR. <laughs> VR is so, so uh, captivating that it's super difficult for a viewer to, to concentrate on, on narration, on, on narrative aspects. So in the beginning, when we were, and I have to say, we started the VR with our own preconceptions of how the film is gonna look like and, and 
what we are gonna make. In the end, what we did make was in a lot of, I, I wouldn't say completely different, but uh, a lot different than our starting position because the medium kind of nudges you along. It, it says, yeah, yeah, you can do this, you can do that. So if you're stubborn, we're not gonna be good friends. So you have to kind of say to VR, all right, you're a stubborn, you know, companion in this journey, so we better kind of follow you and, and see what film we make together rather than trying to force our preconceptions on you. So I think this is a good approach when, whenever you're experimenting with any medium, is to try and, and let the medium speak to you and, and, and kind of get into this kind of love and hate relationship with it and, and see, see where you end up and, and hope, pray to God that it's going to be more good stuff than bad stuff because every experiment has a certain amount of things which didn't really work well and then a certain amount of things that worked beyond your wildest expectations. So you kind of take the good with the bad and, and you settle into it and you, and you say, yeah, that's okay, so we are going this way. So um, uh, let's break, break up uh, the talking a little bit and, and, and uh, show some videos or, or something. Yeah, it's, uh, let me just see. Yeah, so let's let's do it like this. Do we have sound? Will we have sound? Okay. Okay, let me just Is there sound? If I press play, will I have sound? The user yeah. of the we are animated we are animated, are animated. Yeah, animated. yeah, all right. That's a brief kind of making of slash some visuals from the VR so that you kind of get an idea what I'm talking about so that you have a feeling of, of what we're talking about. So um, I don't know, we can kind of do this a bit more. I will just see how it goes. So pre-production for, for this film was super interesting. We as you may have noticed there in the in the storyboard we actually had like people inside our vr and then we decided to remove all the people inside the vr because when we were storyboarding it and when we were scripting it just leaving an empty space seemed boring 
seemed like people are going to say, you know, well, what's going on here? But once we uh, created our first VR scenes and we, we saw how it looks, we real, quickly realized that uh, empty spaces are enough. Because it's so overwhelming to, to see this and to be transported into this world that anything else becomes too much. It becomes too difficult to kind of integrate all these emotions and ideas and then when you move to a new scene you are still digesting the previous one and then you're a viewer that's always a scene behind the film and that's not good. It's not good to be a scene behind or a scene ahead. You want to be in the moment so we we had to remove a lot of the actors inside of VR which then completely changed our approach to the film because obviously it's not like you you remove the clock <laughs> or something so we were um, we were I would say brave enough to when we notice that something isn't working to say this isn't working so we have to you know go back to the drawing board and, and try again so th that's a lot of our experience with VR was back to the drawing board. <laughs> uh, our main protagonist, we had the idea of, of, because when we were scripting the film, we knew we were going to have one, one person that you're communicating with. So we were thinking, who is this going to be? Is he going to be like a Syrian immigrant, Nigerian immigrant, is he gonna be, what's his ethnicity gonna be, is he gonna be a you know, man or a woman, child, old, young. We were struggling with this and we played around with a bunch of ideas how to approach this. So we thought maybe we would have like people just changing in front of you. So it's not one person, it's, it's many people. But this was super weird inside VR. It was like, you couldn't really perceive it. So we were stuck because we, we thought, what, were, what are we going to do now? And then we decided, let's just devoid it of all all character, let it be like a placeholder for, a, for anybody. And we stumbled upon this idea of having the, the character be drawn out of these lines, like sharp lines. And we like this idea because of two things. First, mm, So this is, this was the, the look we, we went with. Because he is completely out of place in the environment that surrounds him. You, you feel like he's a foreign body in, in, in there. And we like this idea because, you know, he's out of place, he's dislocated. And the other idea behind the lines were that it kind of gives you this emotion of uneasiness. Lines are like sharp, they're exchanging a lot. Let me see if I can, I can find... Um, duh, duh, duh. Mm, where are the lines? Okay, so... I'll, I'll put this and then I'll, I'll Hi, my, my name is this again, yeah. Let's just make it like s no sound. Okay. But <laughs> hate this. So when you look at him here with each frame, he kind of changes. He's in a state of flux. He, 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 it gives a sort of uh, emotion of, of uh, uneasiness. But we also 
connected this with the paths of the immigrants, all the paths that the immigrants take. So he's also like a road map of all these destinations that uh, immigration takes. So we, we created a, uh, yeah. We created this animation that kind of gives you insight into the uh, visual approach to the main character. So you might wonder where, where in this whole story does this animation kind of fit in? Do, do I just carry it on my stick and then show it to people before they watch the VR? But our approach to VR was let's not stop at creating just a VR setting. Let's treat this VR as an artistic installation. So let's see how we can expand this idea from inside the VR headset onto the physical set that the viewer sees before he enters inside VR. So we came upon this idea in the end. Person. Okay, so we came upon this idea where we have constructed a, a tent uh, that we found to be often used in uh, immigration camps, camps and uh, we created a set which in a sense creates a safe environment for the person who's using the VR because you know this is a uh, safe place for you to explore, on one hand. On the other hand, and for us it's always about practicality and, and art. It has to be combined together. The tent has walls, but the walls are not hard. So if you happen to walk in, into one of the walls, you're not going to bump your head and sue us. You're going to gently see the tent kind of give way and that's a cue that, that you've gone a bit too far. And in front of the tent, to the right of the tent, you have the uh, screen which plays this animation in a loop. Because VR is such a medium, you can have only one person at a time. So we anticipated people waiting to get inside. So why, while they are waiting, they can uh, look at the loop and kind of get the idea uh, for the visual of the main character beforehand and before they enter uh, the VR. Uh, inside VR, we, in the last scene of the film, we have one of the immigrants, we have a photo of one of the immigrants, he's holding a sign and the sign says, where is justice, where is humanity? And it's a cardboard sign. And we duplicated this cardboard sign and we, we put it inside the tent. So when you enter the tent, you don't connect the sign with anything. But when you, and we choreographed your movement inside the tent, that the last scene, when we take off the headset leaves you looking at the sign. So you kind of take something from inside the VR to, to the real world. So it's kind of a reminder of what you've been through that a bit of it should stay with you once, once you leave the tent. So uh, our approach in the studio is Let's see how, how we can uh, utilize this medium that we're working with in order to create the most powerful impact on, on, on the viewer. And using VR is, gives you a lot of opportunities 
that classical 2D or 3D animated film do not give you. So it's uh, in order to fully appreciate what VR can bring, uh, it's up to the author and, uh, and, and the producer and, and the team to really try and, and uh, experiment how far you can take this medium in order to create the most impactful uh, experiences uh, for the viewer. So that's 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 one aspect of of. Uh, uh, I'd say okay. So uh, that's one aspect of, of using VR, and I'm, I'm saying this because if there's anybody in the audience who came uh, to this talk because he's interested in, in VR, I think these uh, ideas and these uh, uh, things that we, we discovered uh, might help you steer your projects in the right direction, or if you're just thinking about VR, it may give you a proper starting point in how, how you should approach approach your VR projects. But as a, as a, as a medium, VR uh, carries a huge technical component with it. Uh, and in order to, to create meaningful VR experiences, you need to be able to harness and, and mm, break in that wild horse, which is called real-time rendered graphics and, and headsets and um, base towers and frame rates and milliseconds and all these things, stereoscopic images, uh, spatial sound. There's a bunch of technical components to it uh, that need to fall in line in order to create a good VR experience. For example, VR can induce motion sickness really easily. So when we were thinking about creating a VR experience, we were experimenting what, what creates, a, creates motion sickness. <laughs> Those were not fun two weeks in the studio, let me tell you. So it's really important to have the, uh, the comfort of the viewer in mind when creating VR experiences and, and try and create experience which does not at all induce motion sickness to, uh, for anybody. So, and it's super easy to, to come up with an idea which looks cool and then once it's implemented, uh, it's horrible for the viewer and that's never, I've seen VR in, in large festivals or really VRs that were quite successful, which to me were unacceptable because they were, they were just like, they would induce a lot of motion sickness, I think. And that's because your body is standing. So for example, in, in your VR experience, if you're moving, like you're in a car, but you're standing, your brain is, you know, your eyes are seeing you moving, but your body doesn't get any signal that it's moving, and that creates motion sickness. So early on, we decided no motion inside our VR. So this coincides with our idea of creating the VR as a, a performance piece, because you have this piece of real estate, for us it was about 9 square meters to 12 square meters, and your entire world is, has to fit inside this 3 by 3 or 3 by 4 square. So how do you, how do you, how do you trick the viewer where he is always inside this space, but he thinks that, he, that the space is much larger. Now we go into trickery and, and, and misdirection. That's a super important thing when working in VR. 
So for example, when you're, uh, when you're inside our VR, you have to go forward. But if you go forward with each scene, you will, see, you will soon walk out of this square. And then we're in trouble because you're going to lose traction and you're going to hit somebody or you know, something like this. So what we do is you go forward. In the next scene, we place you so that there's nothing here. So immediately you go like this. Oh, something is there. And then you go forward. In the next scene, it's just forest. What's nothing here, nothing here. Oh, the character's there. And you go like this, like this. And in the end, you're, you're making a circle without even realizing you're making a circle. So we do this with clever camera positions. But also, if you're out of position, our main character kindly cuts you off. He kind of walks here, and you're like, oh, OK, now you're back where we need you to be. So we're, we, there was a lot of duct tape on the floor of our studio where we recorded where, where we are at a certain position in the VR. And then we tried to make a perfect circle. And, and we used camera and, and motion and light uh, and, and sound to guide you that you're always in kind of moving where we need you to be. Especially because in the last scene, you need to be at a specific spot. So you're inside VR where you can go wherever you want, but for the last scene, we need you here. So it was really interesting to, to see how we can navigate people and then put like different people, old, young, and see who deviates from the path and then try and minimize this that, so that in the last scene you're at a specific spot. If anybody tries the VR, he's going to know why you need to be in this specific spot for the VR. Because in VR, there, you don't have edit. You don't have camera angles. You don't have any of these things. So you need to think up clever ways how to make the viewer your camera and how how to to choreograph his movements but that he has a feeling like uh, he has free reins to you know do whatever he wants so that was a uh, that was really interesting because you would you would program it then you would compile it, then you would start VR, and then you would have to wait until this spot comes in the film. And then you see, ah, yeah, I'm, I'm at the wrong spot. Then you go back, and then you change something, and then you build it, then you run it, then you go inside VR, and then you wait for this, and then, ah, oh, no, I'm too, too to the left, OK? So go back a bit, and then press again, compile again, and, you, and then it would be like, you know, for the last part of the film where you had to wait for seven minutes for every <laughs> small adjustment to be made. It, uh, it took quite, uh, quite a bit of time, but it was, uh, it was super fun, at least for me, uh, to, to try and figure out ways how to solve this thing, which as a filmmaker, I never really had to solve because your audience sits and looks at the screen. But now your audience is an integral part of the whole experience and you have to take them into consideration and you have to create something that where, where you're working uh, with your audience member. They're, they're the critical and instrumental part of the whole thing. They're no longer kind of a passive observer, which you just hope will not fall asleep in the selection before your film comes. So, uh, yeah, so I think in the end, uh, the most important thing that I wanted to, to for you to kind of take from this talk is uh, VR has a lot of potentials. But it needs people working on VR which are able to tap into these potentials and, and, and create experiences that can change people. 
uh, in the in the 13 years that I've been making films, uh, this VR was the only film I ever made that made somebody cry. It was the first time it happened. I thought it was just a hysterical person, so maybe he's crying at anything and anything. But then when it happened two or three times, I, I, I realized that we created something that, that was able to, to move people and touch them uh, in a way which I think is possible uh, with, with such immersive technology. I started out as a painter, so I would be working on my painting, you know, painting away, week, month, I don't know. Then you exhibit the painting and people kind of just drink they drink and they kind of glance at it like decoration on a wall. Oh, nice painting, nice painting. And you're standing there frustrated. And then I, by chance, I, I stumbled upon animation and I thought, yeah, they're, they kind of, they bring people in, they turn off the lights. They say, please turn off, off your mobile phones. There's no food for people to kind of, in, in animated festivals, not in um, cineplexes. And I thought, this is it. You know, you have your audience glued and they're just watching at you and, and at your work and they're connecting with it. And immediately I said, yeah, screw painting. Let's work on animation. <laughs> When VR came along, I had the same epiphany. I thought, oh, right, so this takes you from, from wherever you are and it, it transports you into my, my work. And, and it grabs you, you know, by the throat and it says, you know, watch, you know, unless, like some people, you don't finish the VR but take off the headset and go, <laughs> go home. <laughs> But unless this person takes off the headset, no, which is also, I think, a good reaction, any reaction is better than no reaction, you kind of, you, you have it. You have the attention of this person. And today, that's super difficult. I'll be the first to admit that sometimes, you know, you're watching a film and you hear that zzz, 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 and you're like, Five minutes later, well, what happened? Ah, was it a good film? Ah, people are clapping and you're like, ah, I missed it. It's super difficult and we are always chumming away, you know, with our day and, and, and what we saw on online, on YouTube and, you know, Afghanistan and this and that and, you're, and you, you go in, into the cinema and you, you carry these things with you. VR for me was an opportunity to try and immerse you even, even more into something. So it's a brilliant medium. I think it's, it will never replace cinema, just as much as PDF never will replace a book, just as much as CDs will never replace vinyl. It's, it's not even the same thing, I would say. It's like trying to say pairs will replace apples. It's, it doesn't make sense. So I don't see it as a cinema killer. I don't see it as a competitor to cinema or to film in general. I just see it as an interesting uh, medium to tell stories and to try and immerse people into your ideas and hopefully kind of transform them or change them. Or, or, if, or if you are just into entertaining people, then, then kind of just give them a chance to transport into, into another reality f for a brief moment and hopefully they, e they emerge from it uh, better or, or enriched for, for an experience. The last thing with VR is that it's, uh, once you finish the film, you don't have the blessed inertness of 2D, 3D films, because you just send the DCP and wave to the audience <laughs> after the film. VR is very much a technical thing. It's 
if it's proper VR. So let's not kid ourselves. Creating a sphere and then just projecting a film, 360 film onto a sphere, it, that's not VR. That's, I would say, like 360 video or expanded video or something. VR has to be real-time rendered so you can actually see what's behind this laptop. That's, that that would means virtual reality. If you just take a 360 camera and then record something and put it inside a headset and people can just do this, but they can never go like this, I think then you are in a in kind of expanded cinema realm. So VR needs to be real-time rendered. It's two screens, HD, 90, 90, not 19, 90 frames per second. So it's a lot of computing power. It requires proper software, proper hardware, the headset, the base stations, you know, the graphic cards. All these things have to align in order for you to experience the work properly. So I don't know if any of you remember Overscan and stuff like this. So you, so you did a film and you have something happening on the edge of the screen and then you go to a projection like 15 years ago and they, they didn't format it correctly and then they cut out a bit of the film, I don't know if anybody's old enough for this, or if you do an interlaced video and they mess up the face and then you, in motion blur, you have those lines and stuff like this, I don't know if anybody's, I see him nodding, I, but he, he, that's it. So I was super happy when we kind of got over these difficulties and films were just films. Now in VR, it's back with a vengeance. <laughs> So you need to be invested in how your VR is presented uh, and uh, is it running properly and, and if all the technical aspects are, are there in place and usually because it's such a young technology and people really don't understand it, usually it's going to be like one problem to ten problems. At AnimaFest we had a problem that we've never had before, but I mean that was like our premiere, our second screening, so. <laughs> we couldn't understand why, we, why the headset was losing tracking. We, we were crazy with it. We spent hours trying to see what's going on. So we bring another headset and it works. And we're like, ah. Half an hour later, headset is lo losing tracking. So you're inside the VR and suddenly you're like, whoop. <laughs> You're down on the floor. <laughs> and we, we were so frustrated. It turns out the heat, because it was summer, you have the tent, and inside the tent it's like 40 degrees, and it turns out that the base stations at 40 degrees don't work properly. So that's what we learned there. You know, then we come to unsee. And then we think, what are we going to learn today <laughs> about VR? So it's a learning curve. It's a learning process. You have to stick with it and, and just take it for, for the ride, you know, for the good and for the bad. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's time for questions and answers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I brought a goodie bag. <laughs> But I have a couple of questions to you. Not, not for you. So, from the audience, if somebody has a question, <laughs> he gets an Excel T-shirt <laughs> from my studio. <laughs> okay, so I do. Uh, Hi. Are there any other difficulties of uh, telling a story in VR, are, other than just keeping uh, viewers' attention by like image and sound? Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of difficulties in telling stories inside VR. I think it's a medium that doesn't like stories that much. It likes experiences much better. So you need to you need to have a script that is like half a page long, because <laughs> that's that's about how much you're gonna need in the end. Because anything else becomes superfluous, because people are too invested and too immersed to to follow uh, a narrative 
uh, narrative kind of classical storyline. So that's 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 the most important thing I think uh, in 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 storytelling inside inside VR. Yeah. Okay. Yay! Okay, so you can ask a question. And Thank I have you. also like a postcard. So, wait, if anybody wants a postcard and has a question. Yeah, I have a question, but more related to the topic. If you, I might have missed it, but um, have you did any interviews before doing the film? Or it, you just came up with the idea on okay. your own without actually having yeah. these people interviewed? And the second question right now is, yeah. have they experienced your film? Yeah, so... Um, we partnered up with a few uh, organizations that work with immigrants and we asked them to uh, interview uh, some of the immigrants that they have in the center or if they had some immigration stories uh, to give us. Uh, we didn't really uh, use these stories to inform our work. We used it because as part of the of the whole dislocation thing, we also created a website, primary studio slash dislocations, with the stories of immigration. Uh, the uh, we also have on it uh, an interactive immigration map, and uh, we have the links to all the uh, immigration uh, organizations that deal with immigrants, because we wanted to expand this. Uh, idea that we were working on uh, as much as we could but our film because when we were uh, looking for co-producers I'm not gonna say where we went but they were like offended you're like white guys from split and you're talking about immigration it was like who who gives you the right do you have an immigrant or, or something you know amongst you uh, uh, that kind of I mean, that's that's. I think that's a, a lot of those things is happening now. Like you know, you need to be uh, aborigin to talk about aborigin. You need to be immigrant to talk about immigration and stuff like this. But we're talking about immigration for from our standpoint. So for us, it was not about let's see what how the immigrants are experiencing immigration. We wanted to talk about how we are experiencing this topic. So for us. The idea was not let's find interviews, let's find immigrants, and then let's try and tell their stories. It was for us, how are we dealing with this? How do we see this problem? And what's our connection with it? Yeah, okay. Hey. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you. And I'm uh, coming from more technical part. Uh, what type of design you went with, uh, what, I don't know, what problems or solutions you found. And also, I'm curious about the graphics. Was it created and then imported, or was it created right inside VR? Yeah, uh, so we used Unreal. Previously, we also used Unity. Uh, we decided to go with Unreal because we think it's a more powerful and versatile uh, uh, engine. Although, pardon, Unity uh, is a, maybe a bit easier to grasp in the beginning than Unreal. Uh, all the all the elements were done uh, in Blender, ZBrush, and then imported inside Unreal. Animation was done uh, with motion capture using XSense motion capture suit, and uh, then it was uh, cleaned up inside Blender and then imported in Unreal. The biggest technical challenge uh, was the main character because he he changes from frame to frame and that was I've never seen that in inside VR so we we tried quite a few things until we stumbled on a solution how to create him and and it was a mix of artistic and technical in uh, thinking to to come up with a solution. Aside from this, 
really big challenge is the stereoscopic approach of VR, so uh, clip maps do not work inside VR, uh, which is something we found out a bit later in the process, just because for clip maps they need to face the camera, so that's, that's how you don't see it's a clip map, but when you have two eyes, then yeah, it cannot be facing both both of them at the same time. So that was uh, so a bunch of things like this, like small things, which normally inside Unreal work perfectly. Inside VR, they don't work at all, and nobody has a solution how to replace it. So you have to be super creative about it. And uh, what time a the production part general? Like classic film, like for us, it's two years. For the for the thing to be done, production a year and pre-production half a year, and then year and a half, two years. And also, what is the the, the further uh, story of the film? I mean, um, the journey. So you had this on the festivals, right? Yeah. A few of them. Or yeah. How much? And what's next? Yeah, yeah. So for 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 a VR project such as ours, we're looking not only to festivals but also to galleries. Uh, uh, and and the, f the film has just as much of a life uh, in galleries and uh, than it does on, on festivals as well. So I think it's like the same amount of exhibitions that that we uh, got invited to as as festivals. So it's a uh, it's a medium that that can be presented as part of a festival, but also as an art installation. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, so you get like three postcards because you had three questions. <laughs> I will ask you one last question also. Uh, you actually. Don't worry, I have a lot of postcards, <laughs> so you can actually, anybody can get it. I just use this as a ruse. Uh, if you want. Here you go. Postcards. You almost answered it about the future of VR, like how far it's going to go. Because a couple of years ago, people were not thinking that VR can be used like this much. Uh, and right now, like last year, we had a lecture from a Polish artist. Um, it was called Love, uh, the film he did in VR, but mostly like an experience. And it was almost like people wearing special suits. Yeah. that help them feel the sensations, yeah. like ha making love or something like this. So will it stay as a, more as, as an experience you can have, or actually VR will like take over something in the end? I mean, it's for me, I think, and I was talking about this earlier, with, uh, I don't know who it was, I think VR will be like an amusement park or, or like a huge cinema. It's going to be something that you experience once a month, once a year, I don't know. Because it's, uh, it just, it's so immersive, uh, it, can't, it doesn't really work as something that's going to replace a TV or something like this. It's, it's, uh, I think it will always be uh, on the sidelines of everyday life. I think augmented reality will be immersive, part of our lives that uh, five years from now it's just going to be, everybody's going to be uh, using it. Uh, for VR, I think VR um, as a medium for filmmakers and artists is super exciting and I think it has a bright future. I think at and now it's really cumbersome. You have this headset after 15 minutes of this headset kind of starts to bother you. You have to be tethered to a computer. It's, you know, bulky. The, the content is not there yet. Uh, the technical specifications are not there yet. But I mean, 10 years down the line, five years, I don't know when, when it becomes like super slick, when you can have like 50 people in the same experience at the same time, you know, with 5G, Bluetooth, I don't know, whatever they figure out, then I think it really has a, 
uh, a lot of potential. I wouldn't necessarily uh, discard it, but I also wouldn't kind of put my all my eggs in that basket. We are now doing a 2D short animated film, so and then we are also preparing uh, in pre-production for a feature animated film which is 2D. So it's not like VR. So no, we are doing VR. It's, for me, it's, it was ju it's just a tool. So if a project comes along that's great for VR, then it's going to be VR. But I wouldn't say I wouldn't categorize things like 2D, 3D. Remember, like 10 years ago, all the 2D artists were like, Ah, 2D is gone. Everybody's working in 3D. You couldn't go to a festival without some guy, ah, fucking 3D, hey 3D. Now you go to a festival and there's like two 3D films, right? You, you have stop motion, you have 2D animation. It's so much more prominent than 3D animation. Like even in your selection, when you think about it, how many 3D films do you have? Very little. I think like five. Almost none. Yeah, something like this. So yeah, there's no need to worry. Uh, 2D animators, 3D animators, we are all. It's going to be good. Thank you very much for yeah. this magnificent talk. And thank you for thank the you patience. Thank you everyone for coming. Yeah. Thank you.